All right, well, let's see how this shakes out. Can Matt Ness mount a comeback here against this mono-red goblin horde? Excuse me, this <laughs> Rectos goblin horde, of course, splashing yep. for the Thoughtseize variant thereof. Speaking of Thoughtseize, I'm going to Thoughtseize your stuff. Hello, Muxus. Get the hence, please. It's probably what Matt Ness <laughs> is thinking. With no other answers in hand immediately, you got to think that's a pretty good pickup here for him, unless he wants to prevent the Thoughtseize of Chris's yeah. own. Thoughts is might as well just read against a goblin deck. Take target Muxus. If you don't have a Muxus in hand, then take any other card. It's just <laughs> a card you have to deal with as this mono black uh, um, gift deck, just because look at Matt Nass's hand. He has a grasp. He has a ravenous chupacabra. Really, really powerful removal spells, but you can't beat Muxus putting in four goblins here with spot removal. No, you cannot. So let's get this game underway here. Decides to take the Thoughtseize. Muxus gets to hang out in hand, but we are on track for a turn three Muxus. Luckily, though, Matt Nass does have some removal in hand and has Massacre Worm, which can be absolutely backbreaking for a Goblin's deck if it resolves. Agreed, and look at this. Already, we are one land away from a turn three Muxus, and Matt Nass just says, if you have it, you have it, and he mm. doesn't. Oh, so close. That was super close. Wow. I mean, land, the game just could have been, been over like, there. Yeah, they could be like, yeah. oh, whoops, Lincoln, you'll miss it. There we go. But Matt makes a calculated risk just saying, okay, if I just grasp your Skirk Prospector and I don't get, uh, I don't progress my battlefield, what am I really doing, you know? Ooh, nice that was pick huge. up there. Able to go and get Muxus Goblin Grandy out of hand, who would be able to come down next turn land or not. Yeah, and all of a sudden, we're looking at a battlefield where a bunch of 1-1s one -ones and you got a 1-2. Priest of the Forgotten God might not be known uh, for its blocking ability, but it's going to do some <laughs> oh. work here. Oh, we didn't grasp it because we would have had to... Oh, no, wait, we're going... No, never mind. Mux has yeah. got, got there by, uh, by Thoughtseize, so we're fine. Yep. Grasp is going to be reserved for that uh, conspicuous snoop, yep. but bad news off the top of the deck. We got another one. Oh, boy. Hello, dear conspicuous snoop. How are you? <laughs> okay. How do we get to Massacre Worm the quickest way possible? Ravenous Chupacabra can take care of one of these critters if we find another land. We really don't want to be snacking on Priest, although Priest gets, you know, progressively worse as this game goes on and the more creatures are added to the battlefield. Yeah, I think something like a Lazatep Reaver to be able to set up a Priest activation uh, plus a Phyrexian Tower activation is kind of what Mad Nass is hoping for. Or mm -hmm. just a second giant six-drop worm. That's probably it as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> what he wants to see. That worm has teeth, right? Oh. That's terrifying. Yeah, that is a, that's a scary worm. I don't know yeah. which six... Actually, I do know which six drop is more frightening from which deck, though. Uh, Masker Worm has done <laughs> some nasty stuff, but Muxus has time and time again uh, been putting its uh, foot down on this tournament. Oh yeah, for sure. You're not going to be cheating out that Massacre Worm too many turns earlier, but Muxus, getting that down on turn three, that's just backbreaking most of the time. Agreed. No Muxus though right now, as uh, one was sent to the graveyard. We've just got the Goblin Warchief, Chain Whirler, and another Warchief in hand. So, double Warchiefs can give the upcoming Goblins a bit of a discount. Chain Whirler, yep. obviously none there for him. And one thing I want to point out here, if we look at the records, we do have a little bit of a difference here. Matt Nass is playing down. Matt is at 9-2, and two. Chris Kvartek is at 8-3. and three. So while Matt has a loss to give, Chris Kvartek is really kind of playing with his back up against the wall here. Yeah. We're going to go to this Grasp of Darkness now. What are we targeting? Is it going to be the one Snoop, and then hopefully we can kill the next? Nope, it's going to be the Goblin Warchief. Interesting choice when you have another Goblin Warchief in hand and you can kind of deal with uh, that. I think I would have leaned on killing a Snoop and then hoping to draw land and Chupacabra the other one. Ooh, or, you know, Sack nice. Priest if you really want to, but... Yeah, no, this is nice. We can get such a Supplier out and munch on it with the Phyrexian... Oh, no, we still don't have enough. Yeah, only get three Threat mana next there. Turn. You know, uh, I believe the Stitcher Supplier in the last deck we saw is a little bit better, but still <laughs> incredibly powerful in this deck as well, feeding God Pharaoh's gift. Oh, for sure. Hmm. 
And here we see the disadvantage of the Rakdos Goblins compared to the Mono Red. If you draw yeah. a land as the Mono Red deck, you put it into play and you cast a spell with it. With the Rakdos one, you do have Canyon Sluice, which are a little bit awkward. You want to make your Thought Seasons playable, but in this situation, it's uh, not great. I wonder if there's a consideration to just cycle that, get that land at the top and see what's there for the Snoops to possibly activate off of. Crankos, yeah, perhaps. Definitely interesting. Oh, looks like we're going to go for Goblin Chain Whirler. Ping this Stitcher Supplier off the battlefield. Down to one goes the Priest of Forgotten Gods. I like it. Getting aggressive yeah. here. Chris Kavartek is like, you know what? Muxus is overrated. I'm just going to kill you with tutus. Yeah, you can do that. You can 100% <laughs> do that. Like, goblins are terrifying by themselves. Muxus just kind of yep. makes them exponentially terrifying. And right now, we're already in a position where Matt Ness has to draw a land to Chupacabra, that Goblin Chain Whirler, to just stay alive. And that's mm -hmm. not even dealing with the Goblin War Chief or what's going to pop off off the top of the library here. Oh, and Thoughtseize no. is not going to be it. That's not going to be oh, it. Matt Ness, he's riding on the wall. And Chris Kavartek picks up another win. So both players now at 9-3. and three. Such yep. a rough draw there for... Matt Nass, unfortunately, but congratulations, Chris Kavartek just keeps winning.